In our last session, I briefly described how the Caffey family of Emory, Texas was murdered as they slept by two men, and how the next day it was learned that one of these two men planned the murder with his girlfriend, Erin Caffey, the daughter of the parents of the family. Understandably, the question on everyone's tongue was, how could this have happened to what appeared to be a model church-going family? The testimonies offered by friends, neighbors, and others suggests an explanation that is really not at all surprising. Until just six weeks before the murders, Aaron Caffey, age 16, had been homeschooled and raised not only in a small town, but in a home far out on a secluded road, relatively isolated from contact with others. Her father, in the words of one townsperson, was very strict, an old-timey kind of strict, and it seems that Aaron was not feeling unconditionally loved at home. Her father was beating her over the head with the Bible, but not with love. In fact, as she and her girlfriend sat in the car during the murders, they sat under a wood sign that had an inscription from the Bible. Children need more than simply being beaten with the truth. According to a member of her church, when she began attending the local high school, she was just beginning to interact with others her own age, and she immediately latched on to Charlie Wilkinson, age 19, in an intense way. They soon became inseparable. Why wouldn't she react in this way? This girl did not feel loved at home, and here was a kid who suddenly lavished on her more imitation love than she had ever imagined even existed. He looked at her, he touched her, he listened to her, he talked to her, found her sexually attractive. Considering her subsequent behavior, it's very likely that she had sex somewhere early in this relationship, fueling her need to be with him. Never mind that he was using her. What mattered to her was that she was getting something from him. It was a trade, sure, but she was getting more than she'd ever gotten in her life. So she didn't care that it was a trade. The feeling of all this imitation love just pouring in, all this praise, power, pleasure, safety, and the combination of it all was glorious. And she was willing to do anything, anything in the world to preserve it. One close friend even had the insight to say, the girl had no life. She wanted a life with this guy. But her father didn't like what he was seeing. The father was older than his daughter. He recognized that this 19-year-old kid, her boyfriend, was using his daughter. He knew what 19-year-old boys were thinking about. How did he know? Well, because he used to be a 19-year-old kid. And because most 41-year-old men still think of such things when they look at other women. So Aaron's father tried to break them up. He told her not to see Charlie anymore. How do you think that went over? Are you kidding? When she found Charlie, it was like coming out of a cave and seeing the light for the first time. There was no going back. When people get enough imitation love from an experience, they don't just want it, they become addicted, wildly addicted. They become quite literally insane. I'm not exaggerating, which explains what Aaron and Charlie began to do next. And we'll talk about that in our next session.